and welcome to episode 11 of Quick Team Fusion Tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using arrays of arrays to expand the map past our one little corner. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin. Welcome to episode 11 of Quick Team Tutorial. So, today we're going to be looking at expanding our map, which at the moment, if I run it, you can see it's just the one level. It's an interesting level. It's a cool level. I like the level. However, it is unfortunately just the one bit of the map. And clearly we we'll want to expand the map. Now we're going to do this over the next few videos. We're not going to do it all at once. But the first thing I want to say is that whenever I do any programming at all, I always have a piece of paper, a pen, and my trusty calculator. And the reason for that is there are so many calculations which you need to do when you start planning your game out. Now, if I'm asked to do a professional game, I do all the planning first because obviously it needs to get signed off. Need everyone, uh, the people paying, need to tick it and go, yep, that's what I want. When I'm just playing around and mucking about, and for these video tutorials, what I try and do is, is try and do it without planning, and then the bits that need planning, I get my pen and paper out and start planning. So. This bit I definitely do need a bit of a plan about how I'm going to do this. So, first thing I'm going to do is just draw a gr simple grid out. And I'll show you this in a second. I only have the one camera. So, just draw a simple grid out, okay? And this is where we are currently. This is our map here, okay, which is the one on the screen. Now, that currently is stored in an array. But what I'm thinking is, well, so we name this something sensible. Now, if I number these, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, then it might be sensible that I label or name this array R0, C0, row 0, so it's in row 0, and it's in column 0. Okay? So, when I look, when I go into it, let's, let's go into our file. So when I go into the file that this is stored in, if I just open it up, okay, it's under part 11 for my one, but you you might be doing this all in the same file. And I see array R. Okay, let's rename that. So I want, I could say level or frame or part or just leave it as array. Can't come up with a more imaginative name. And I'm going to say it's in let's say column 0, row 0. Okay, that seems logical to me. And so when I go back into Click to Infusion, I need to say, yep, yeah, I need to edit that. And I want, oh, what did I say, column 0, row 0. Click OK. Now let's run the application, and it runs just fine, so it's loaded it OK. Now I'm going to name all these arrays something, but what might, what I might want to do, and I will do, is create an array to store all the names of my other sections. So if I write that in array C0 R0, okay. So if I've written that in there, so that's what that bit's called. But I might want to store all of these other names in an array and then I can use the array to look up what the name of the next one is. That could be one way of doing it. Or what I could do is store what these, zero, what these numbers are and programmatically open up the different files. But I want to introduce text arrays, so I'm going to do it this way. So it doesn't actually matter what I name the, the arrays. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to open, I'm going to go back to the uh, frame editor double click and I want to open another array so I'm going to type in array and put it here remember this is an invisible object it won't ever show up I'm going to click on it and it's already put as a text array so I don't need to change any of that which is great um, and right so I want to I want to edit it so I'm going to go to my array editor which I downloaded earlier and uh, it doesn't actually exist at the moment, so what I can do is just new and text. So this, this new array doesn't exist at the moment. 
and I'm going to call this Array C0R0 because that's the current one I'm at and I'm going to create one for underneath so this is going to be row 1 is it? yeah, row 1, column 0, row 1 and let's save that and I'm going to call this Array of Oh, let's do camel case. Dot R. So array of arrays dot R. And then let's copy that. And save. There we go. I can close that. So we've got our array of arrays. And what I want to do is start a frame. I want I can just drag this across. And I want to load. I'm just gonna highlight the that one, I'm just going to say array of arrays. Okay. Now what I might want to do is double click this, create the array of arrays first, and then what I can do is right click on this. So instead of loading that one, I'm going to get the name from the other array. So I'm going to read value from uh, read string from XYZ position, remember this is uh, text that we're storing and I'm going to do 0, 0, 0 click OK, <laughs> moment of truth let's run the application and doesn't doesn't load at all ok, so that has unsuccessfully loaded ok, so we've got to look at what I've done wrong I'm sure it's very simple. So I'm loading that. Hmm. Let's have a look. Okay. So array of arrays. And let's just open that up and see if it's saved alright. So let's open array of arrays. Stored at zero zero. Ah, it's because I don't have a dot AR dot R file. Dot R and, uh, uh, after it. So let's just make this a bit big. Can I stretch this? I don't think I can stretch this for some reason. Uh, okay, it doesn't. It doesn't allow me to make it any bigger. But I can just type dot R. And let's save that. Okay. Run application, and there we go. So it's now loading the name of that from the array. Now you might say, well, what's the point of that? Why didn't you just load the array file? Well, say if I wanted to change which array file is opening, or I wanted to use that later on for the whole map, then I can do that a lot easier than having to write in all the different names of the files within the um, Click Team Fusion uh, event editor. So, let's have a look at seeing if if I can create another level, let's try and do that. So I'm just going to click and drag this and I'm just going to copy it in the same. So it starts with a copy. And the next one's going to be row one. Okay. Let's double click array light. And it doesn't matter which editor you use, there's plenty out there which are very good. So what I'm going to do is open that one I've just copied and I've renamed it so it's row one double click that and obviously I have to click number my bad because <laughs> it's a number array and I need to change these so I can actually get my person down on it so I've got to look at the bottom here and there's three land tiles at the bottom so there needs to be three land tiles at the top which there are so let's save that and this is row one it's fine Okay, so now now comes the fun. So when our character gets to the bottom of the screen, okay, and this is torture waiting for this, when our character gets to the bottom of the screen, we want them to then go on to the next screen, okay, which we've just created. So we need to program that. Now we've had when it leaves the play area. Now that was old school, that was way back, so we can delete that now. And we need to insert a new event now where where have we stored the position we stored it in here 
current tile x is greater than I have no idea. Current tile x now is going down, so it'd be current tile y is greater than 20. Now, what I do is I actually just create an event if I've forgotten how many times there is, and just do an action which is blatantly obvious. I don't actually want this in our game, however, it will show me whether I'm getting in the right area. So if I scroll, if I move him down, see how close am I at? Not got to 20 yet. And another way I can do this is something we've done before. We can add our active object. Now I haven't named any of these things yet. I can actually have a look at his current values. So current tile is 14, so actually 20 was too much. So I need it that when he gets to 15. So when it's 15, then he goes on to the next level. Okay, so I need to change that to greater or equal to 15. If I type the right number. Okay, let's see if that works. This is torture waiting for him to get to the bottom, but so do we. Okay, so he should get destroyed. Remember, we don't want this in our game. There we are, it does get destroyed. Okay, that's just a test to see whether we've got the right condition. Alright, so let's get rid of that. And what we want to do is we want to start again. So we want to load a different array. So let's click and drag this down. Remember, our array of arrays is loaded. And we, we only want that to load once. However, the level array we want to load again if they get to the bottom. So let's edit this. And this time we want the one. We want. Uh, no, yeah, we want zero across and one down, okay, which is where it was. Click OK. But we also need to then destroy all the tiles and then go on that loop that we did at the start again, which will create the tiles but in the new correct positions. Okay, let's run that and see what happens. So we get our character to the bottom and we should load the new the new frame. And there we go. <laughs> so it's destroyed all the tiles successfully, but then we haven't created all the tiles again successfully. So I presume that it hasn't loaded it correctly. And let's just open it up, let's check that we've got uh, everything right. So if I load that array up and just double check, yep, yeah, it's all there. It all looks hunky dory. And let's change this to text and let's open the array of arrays. And so that is at x is 0, and y is 1, and z is 1, uh, 0. So it should be 0, 1, 0, I would have thought. So we're loading that from the array 2. I think what's happening is it's just doing it so many times. So what I probably need to do is change the position of this one. So if I set the y coordinate 0, get it out of that loop. And if I set the current tile Y to zero, I think what was happening was just looping round and around. I tried to do it in two steps, but I don't think I can. I think I need to get this guy back up to the top. Otherwise, it just creates an endless loop. There we go. Now, what's happening here is I haven't reset the current tile, uh, the other one that I need to reset. Uh, so I need to set the uh, desired y to zero. Let's run it again. And you can do that quite easily in Click to Infusion. You create endless loops, infinite loops, which are not good. <laughs> Normally causes crashing. Okay, now what's funny here is that it is load it's loading the old map. 
still, which is interesting. So for some reason it's loading the old map, which means that, hmm, I don't know why it's loading the old map, unless it didn't save properly. Let's go back and just check. Okay, so number array open this one. We've got the zeros there, so it should load okay. So this one's telling it to open this one now. Hmm. This is where things get frustrating. So when it gets to the bottom it should load the new map, but it's not for some reason. It's still loading the old map. Hmm. Just check that it's not at position one, which is sometimes what happens. So let's keep going down. No, it's not. It's not loading that correctly. I'm not quite sure why. Is it? Is it? It's doing that first. That's fine, everything's fine there. Maybe I need to remove the array. Ah, I need to clear the array. There we go. So let's clear the array first and then load the new array. Let's see if this works. So I've cleared the old array, got rid of the old array, and then created the new array. This should work. There we go. Now that's not ideal, but it is cleared the old array. And let's see if I see if it's the X that's one for some reason. No, it's just not loading for some reason. So if I press Ctrl and Z, it's at the load array file that one and last thing to check is that I've named it correctly so if I copy and paste that let's open our array of arrays it's text open array of arrays let's just click on that and press control and V to absolutely make sure that it's saved correctly save array of arrays Close that. Got a good feeling about this. Come on. Logically, this should work now. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom here. And there we go. Hey! Now, the player's out of sync because we've just put the player at 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, and that's not quite maybe what we want. But it is now a working thing. Uh, I now have multiple levels if I reset it then I've got somewhere for the player to go and I can name the arrays whatever I want because I just need to update the array of arrays function notice he can't go back okay none of that functionality is there yet but I did say we wouldn't do this in just one video so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you've liked it please click like if you uh, want to see more please click subscribe thank you very much